What's good, y'all? You dog back here again, here in 2019. Let's get it, bringing y'all more new, fresh content. Now, I told y'all, what I tell y'all, I told y'all that I'm going to stay bringing that fire. I'm going to stay doing stuff that other people are not doing, man. I'm going to stay producing more stuff for the people, all right? And... There's a few different uh, videos, a couple different that you'll you'll probably see uploaded today, um, were matchups, inverse matchups, where I was like, you know what, you know, you'll you'll see after this video the the Jedi versus bounty hunters, all right, and I'll talk more about that, how I came to you know up with this idea in that video, but for this one, pirates versus marines, which are actually better matchup for for matchup. Now you can say. Well, isn't that too difficult to de just say comprehensive who's actually better pirates and marines? You like you have so many outliers. So what I'm going to do in these videos of matchups, inverse matchups, is I'm going to take differing levels, all right? If there are different groups, like we have pirates and marines, obviously you have fodder, so you have the big dogs at both levels. So we're going to take each level now. With the Marines and the Pirates, I'm going to go four levels, okay? I think that's fair and not to make this video too long, right? We're going to start at fodder for fodder. The second level is going to be the captain of the Marines versus what I deem to be paradise level captains, all right? Captains are a, a, a high officer in the Marines, believe it or not. If you actually look, they got like 17, 19 different positions in the Marines. It's incredible. It's ridiculous. But yeah, captain versus a paradise captain. Then we're going to have uh, Vice Admirals versus, you know, pretty much a legendary tier. You know, I think Luffy already there, Zoro there, Don Chanel, Joker, all the, you know, all those cats. Then, of course, we're going to go to Big Dogs, the Admirals versus the Yonko, the classic matchup. But I think each of these, and then comprehensively, I guess we can draw a conclusion after all of those. But I think each of these are great because people say, but what about this guy? But what about this? Look, bro, you know, we're going we're gonna to compare pair the levels and we'll go from there. You know, you may come to your own decision on each of the levels. That's why I'm opening up this panel. I like to be as transparent as possible, as objective and neutral as possible. Even if I favor the pirates more than the marines for the most part, I'm fair. When it comes to death matches, I'm completely objective. All right, so let's start with the fodder. Now... Let's start with the fodder marines, all right? And fodder marines really are anyone that's not captain. Like, if you, to me, if you're not a lieutenant, bro, you fodder. Like, you are potentially, like, you are cannon fodder. You are the definition of cannon fodder. Now, you can say, what, what, you know, what about petty officers? Bro, they're getting washed by anyone of significance. Luffy from the jump. Now, you can say he was an exception, but Zoro was like, they were already captain level from the jump. When you get powers of promise, they're already rocking captain level shit. So you fought her, bro. If you're not really a captain, but I'll, I'll go, you know, lieutenant or ensign, right? If you, even ensign, meh, really, if you below captain to me, you you pretty much, you, you either fought her or you borderline fought her. Captain to me is like where you really start talking anything of relevance in the series of One Piece when you tell them the Marines. So take that for what you were. So I got, I got a pretty large full of fodder here with the Marines. But with the Marines, you know, you see a lot of them rocking muskets. You don't really see them rocking pistols or anything like that. Uh, you see some rock swords and whatnot. But, you know, they more so with the with the pistols. Pretty, pretty cheap. Um, the training is okay. Training's pretty good. Um, you know, they they have their military, you know, ways. They're, they're taught through a lot of things. They come in numbers and stuff. But if we talk about the individual Marine, you know, he, he's... I won't say he's superhuman. I'd say he's a, a, a capable human. At this point, I don't think they're superhuman. I think they're capable humans. Uh, I think they, you know, they're... They're okay fighters. It's just the fact is, if you throw a bunch of fodder marines out at you know relevant pirates, they're gonna get they're gonna get washed. But in fairness, though, you do have some tough fodder. You do have some tough, especially in the new world. There is some tough fodder. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just like, for example, the G, the G5 Marines, right? Bunch of fodder, right? But were they, you know, they they may have not necessarily hung with the fire tank pirates, but they'll give them a push. The G5 Marines would give the fire tank pirates a push. So you got that kind of level fodder. See what I'm saying? You got some strong fodder out here. Now let's look at the look, look briefly at the the pirates, pirate fodder. All right. We're just regular old Joes. We're not talking, you know, not most of your noteworthy crews, okay? Or if they're like uh, allied crews, you know, you have anywhere from just, you know, Alveda level fodder crew all the way up to fire tank uh, pirates, no name crew. See what I'm saying? So both, both factions have, you know, variations when it comes to pirates. Um, it really depends. Pirates are more individualistic when they're fighting styles. You know what I'm saying? We have guys out here that use a lot of blades, you know, some use pistols and guns and that nature. Uh, some just use their fists. So you get more variety, I would say, re makes sense, uh, with pirates than you do marine fodder. Pirates also very greatly, for the most part, I would say, pirate fodder. Physically, are they superior? I think they're about the same on average. Like you say, you do have some exceptions on both sides. So physically, I think they're relatively similar. I think the pirate fodder, they're, they're less disciplined. So that could be a thing. Individually, though, the you know, as far as in skills, pirates generally are worth more than fodder marines. Uh, I mean, look at Whitebeard's crew. You feel me? You you had a hundred thousand Marines, but Whitebeard and his allies weren't rocking that many folk. Uh, so there is that. Um, you know, you even look at even though they're not pirates, something like the samurai fodder. See what I'm saying? Or Kaido's fodder. You know what I'm saying? So it really di differs individually. You know, they might have a substantial, like a bit stronger um, physicality, although the Marines are more disciplined and. I would say, or, you know, have a better will, surprisingly enough, because we normally associate hockey usage with uh, pirates. But there's a reason why father pirates don't really rock hockey. OK, so take that for what it's worth. And we've seen father pirates as well as regular civilians just get knocked out uh, by conquerors hockey. But we've also seen some Marines, but we've seen a good amount of Marines not get knocked out by Congress hockey as well. So I think the Marines, as far as the fodder, are more resilient, even though the Pirates have a slight edge and superior uh, in versatility and, and superior, um, you know, physique. What would I say as far as in fighting skill? Believe it or not, because of the variation, I think I got to go with the fodder Marines have better fighting skill overall. Like I said, if, you, if you're saying the fodder Marine is anything below a captain? Well, a fodder marine, I mean a fodder pirate, even even like I say, like if if it's if it's someone below a captain, I'm taking that fodder marine over uh someone like uh one of the randoms and, and gang beige's crew. You know, together gang beige's crew is nasty, the fire tank pirates are nasty. But one of those guys that ain't one of the top dogs, ain't no uh, Monster Gun Vito, ain't no Gotti, about to say John Gotti, ain't no Capone him. See what I'm saying? Look at, uh, for example, a beautiful example is the Heart Pirates. Look at the Heart Pirates, bro. Look at that fodder. Look at the Kid Pirates fodder. See what I'm saying? So, overall, what do I give, you know, even though you have versatility and better, higher uh, 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 physicality as i mentioned before i gotta go with the fodder marines i think the fodder marines uh they're they're trained better i think they had they have better battle experience than a lot of the fodder pirates i think a lot of the fodder pirates don't have the willpower to to you know do what's necessary so there's that now captains versus i would say paradise captains right uh I personally put Usopp and Nami at, you know, as, you know, Grand Line Paradise level uh, captains. I think they are. Um, I won't use Luffy and Zoro. I won't use really any of the worst generation. I think the worst generation when they were supernovas are exceptions to the rule. You know, you can use a Bellamy.
okay, the hyena Bellamy went uh, pre time skip. He was a power captain. I think he's useful. Um, let's see who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? See, a lot of the dudes that Luffy fought were higher than captain level. So it's kind of hard to say. But yeah, I think Bellamy, I think Nami, I think Usopp are, are great determinants um, of of that kind of thing. I think, uh, well, no, Frankie actually was stronger too. See, it's hard to say um, of, a, of a grand line captain. But anyways, I think some of the New World Pirates who uh, who are allies would fall into this. Um, even though he, he's more powerful, I think it's somebody like Squirtle, okay? He's more powerful than that, but I don't think he's top dog. You know, he ain't called clear he's not in a legendary status. Um, he falls kind of like with Sanji and a lot of them in that middle area. But anyways, when I look at it, physicality-wise, again, uh, Captain and such, they vary greatly. When Captain Kobe, we saw what he brought to the table. You had Captain Axan Morgan. You had Captain Smoker. So you have all kind of variations. Some have Devil Fruits. Captain Shoot with the Rust Devil Fruits. Some have you know powerful Devil Fruits. Some don't. It's the same thing with, um, you know, Captain level, captain level dudes when it comes to pirates, paradise level captains. You know, a guy like Bellamy. You know, with a with a decent devil fruits. Um, you know, Usopp, Nami. When it comes to overall skill, I got to give it to the pirates. Pirates, by this point, I think for the most part are more seasoned. A lot of the captains don't really sail the seas like that. You know, uh, I think a lot of times the pirates have a lot more. Uh, skill went with with various they, they've developed their own specific fighting styles Usopp with the slingshot Bellamy with his hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, you had Nami with the with the staff and then eventually she had the climb attack so you, you have more specialization and again more versatility with the pirates which I think you'll see a common trend um, when it comes to as far as in overall power though I think you got to give it to the captain Okay, this one I think is as a Marine Captain, excuse me. I think they have better overall physicality. I look at Kobe, you could say he was accelerated, but I, I look at Smoker, I look at they, they tend to have more physical, raw physical power. Like I say, you take Luffy and Zoro out of deception from them early on, I think they were already above captain level um, early on, but. You know, you look at somebody like Arlong, you look at Don Cree, you look, even though you could say they grand, maybe they weren't that level, you look at Buggy, you look at Captain Curl, you look at a lot of these captains who maybe who could, could have survived in, in the, you know, Grand Line and whatnot. Buggy's a bit of an exception because of who he is, but you get my point. They're not the physically most imposing. Um, so there, there is that. Um, when it comes to Will... I got to actually give to the captains on this one of the Marines. I think the captains of Marines from what we see, while they might not be as battle hard and battle experienced, they're more gung ho on what they're about, right? They're more going home than a lot of these cats. Look at Usopp, Nami, look at Bellamy. Bellamy had his spears broken, bro. See what I'm saying? Nami and Usopp have constantly shown. Now, Usopp has the potential of Conqueror's Hockey, which is a whole separate discussion. But we see that their, their wills are, I think there's a reason Usopp hasn't unlocked Congress hockey because his will isn't consistent enough. When it comes to the captains, they're pretty resolute in what they're about. So there's that. Um, when it comes to overall fighting capacity, I think they're pretty much even. Um, I think they're pretty much even. I would give, depending on matchups, like when I said Captain Kobe, I actually had Usopp over. But, you know, saying you have situations where... You have guys like uh, Smoker who are Logias. You know, you have powerful Devil Fruit users in the Marines as well. So that you know, pirate captains, they're likely more so to be captured. So overall, I gotta give this edge to the to the um to the Marines. Believe it or not, I gotta give the edge to the Marines. Now, individual matchups, a lot of times I'll have a pirate winning. But overall, collectively, when we're talking captain level, there's too many low showings for the captains of, the, uh, of you know, of the Pirates. You know, I'll take, uh, for example, the dude who was known as the Phoenix. Uh, in uh, the Don Aquino, the Heat dude, before Oven. 
Remember that Phil Ark, that dude? He was nice. He was nice. But a lot of pirate captains, I mean, marine captains, I think, are taking him out. He was cool. But I think he gets taken out by a lot of them. So keep that in mind. Now, also remember, a lot of the pirate captains of the of Paradise are below 300 mil. See what I'm saying? So we're not dealing with the big dogs. We're not dealing with your Capone. We're not dealing with your Law. We're not dealing with your kid, Luffy. Uh, you know, we're, we're not dealing with Jewelry Bonnie. We're not dealing with, you know, X-Rake or anything of that nature. We're, we're you know, we're, we're not dealing with your page rows. You see what I'm saying? We're not dealing with your New World level dudes, all right? Now, let's move up to the Vice Admiral versus the Legendary status, how I call it. Legendary, Don Shinjana, Luffy, Joker, Boa Hancock, Sir Crocodile, you know, the original Seven Sheet Chibukai and whatnot, for, except, you know, Hawkeyes will put up at the top dog status, right? Um, you know, you you know you know your legends, um, Katakuri, you know all all them legends. You know what I'm saying? You you, you take your pick. You compare them to you know, but most most pretty much anyone who's commander. People say commander level. Anyone who's like most of Shishibukai and Yonko commanders. And a few old timers are in this status. You know what I'm saying? So you take them versus vice admirals. Now this just gets interesting. This gets very, very interesting. Physicality wise, it's situational. That one's a question mark because you do have guys like Luffy who are very physical, but then you got some of these vice admirals like Garpa. Former, you know, he's a former golf. And you look at some of those guys at Marine Force. They were impressive. People sleep on the Vice Admirals because they're like, oh, a white bear. The world's strongest man. That's like if Kato came and ran through or, or Lin Lin came and ran through. Like, come on, bro. Pump the brakes. These Vice Admirals are pretty competent. Of course, you got low showings like Maynard. You got Bastille. But then again, you know, it's Sable. And it's Bartolomeo. You know, you got lower showings. But then you got your Vice Admiral Bogart. You got your Momonga. Now, Onaguma. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you always have variations. Skill-wise, overall, I got to give it to the Pirate the Legends. You know what I'm saying? Got to give it to them. Without question. Versatility, I don't think there's any dispute that they have a hell of a lot more versatile techniques. I mean, you do have the Marines, uh, Vice Admirals. They should know some form of hockey. Uh, you know, they should... You know, as far as utilization, that's what's said. You know, uh, they they Roku Shiki should be pretty. You know, they're they're doing that for the most part and stuff. But overall, like you just, bro, they they just don't they don't compare. I mean, from Devil Fruit usage, Devil Fruit mastery, all hockey masteries, and since I mean, you got the pirate dudes who are using advance and all of these things, awakenings. You know what I'm saying? So. You don't really see that with the Marine Vice Admirals. Now, when it comes to, let's see, physicality, skill, versatility. When it comes to overall combat capability, this is tough. It's, it's pretty situational because I want to just outright say the Pirates, but then again, these vice admirals ain't nothing to play with. They ain't nothing to fuck with. Like, they help make up Marine HQ, which is a third, three great power. And again, you got guys like Gar, Bogart, and plenty of folk who we haven't even seen. You got the, the, the pink rabbit and the brown pig. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to say it's, I want to say pirates, but we just, there's just so much of the vice admirals that we haven't seen. So, I don't, and I always say don't disrespect the vice admirals. So, I'm going to say on par. Overall, I give the slight advantage to the legendary pirates over the vice admirals. Most vice admirals are getting they getting that work, but there are enough exceptions to where they can make it competitive in this game. And if you get you know it's vice admiral for vice admiral, I'm taking a pirate legend usually, but matchups do matter, and there are enough of the vice admirals that make me like. Someone like Law, ooh, matchup matters, matchup matters. Y'all need to stop overrating Law. Just saying. You know, someone, I, I could put, I put Capone in a legendary status at this point. Someone like Capone, matchup matters. Extra action matters. Luffy, I think, is taking out pretty much every, I, I have him taking out all the Vice Admirals. Just saying. Zoro, I have him taking him out. 
Now, I know some people don't have – I've had question marks about Garb's durability. Just saying. He got that offensive power, but I need to know what he can take in his advanced stage. He's not like uh, the Golden Buddha that has Zoan. He's not like – he's not white beard. You know what I'm saying? So, we don't know. I mean, you can bring in the question of uh, the Dark Saint Silver's Rayleigh's durability. You know his stamina is legit, but durability, we don't know. See what I'm saying? So, there is that. So, slight advantage. Now, when it comes to the top dogs, y'all y'all should already know my position on this one. But, let's look at overall physicality. Sorry, Admirals. Bro, the Yonko. World's strongest creature. World's strongest man. The absolute monster known as Lin Lin. Shanks can compete with that. Teach. I mean, come on, bro. Then you got guys like Golden Lion Sheik. You had uh, you had Roger back in there, you know what I'm saying? You had uh, you know, you got Hawkeyes, world's greatest swordsman. Physicality, come on, man. Now you do have good physicality, legit physicality, especially with Sakazuki. But Sakazuki, you know, so you can't say Sakazuki's stronger than any of these dudes physically. You know what I'm saying? As well as, I mean, overall, bro, they're not, the Admirals are not known for physical strength. They're known for other things. Now, as far as the skill-wise, I'm not being disrespectful to the Admirals. The Admirals are highly skilled. But the skill goes to the Yonko. The versatility goes to the Yonko. You see what Lin Lin brings to the table? She brings a Soul Soul Nomi. Soul Soul Devil Fruit. She brings a Napoleon Swordsman, top-tier swordsmanship skills. Check out my top 10 uh, swordsman video on One Piece. And you'll see what I think on, her, on Lin Lin's abilities. Uh, you know, you look at her physical, raw physical prowess and her durability. Look at Kaido with, again, complete fires. You got the mace. You got the physical prowess. You got the durability again. You got him be with his uh with his dragon form. Whether it's a devil fruit or, or normal, we don't know. Regardless, you got that ridiculous move set. Like he's a Toriko character or some shit. Then you got Shanks, Hockey Master. Of course, you can throw in the Dark King with that Hockey Master swordsmanship, both of them. Hawkeye's the same thing. Like, bro, what am I supposed to do with that? And overall, uh, overall combat, here's where I say they're pretty much even. They, they're pretty much even. I'm not going to disrespect the Admirals. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I told you I'm going to be objective. I, you know, in skills, versatility, I, I got the, the Yonko. But overall combat, the Admirals got that shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? We've seen advanced armaments in observation hockey. We've seen... Advanced uses of devil fruits. We seen what they bring to the table. So I'm not gonna disrespect them like that. We seen Fujitora swordsmanship. We 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 seen we seen this. So the admirals are legit, but overall, this is where handily the Yonko take the advantage. So overall, what we clearly have here is at the lower levels, Marines are superior to pirates generally. At the higher levels, the pirates are superior. And that's what we've seen throughout the series of One Piece. It should not be a shocker. As we've seen with the pirate battles. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. Um, when you take all of that into consideration though. But who's the better faction? Who's the better faction? Well, here's the thing. This is where you have people who are Marine fanboys. Admiral fanboys and stuff. This is where they come into argument. Because Oda has made it pretty close. Oda has made it pretty close. Because here's the thing, man. Cannon fodder are better than the fodder of the pirates. And there's more of them. And then at the captain level, if you're not a legit top tier or, or you know, a, a, a top mid tier or whatever, the captains are going to give you that work. So that's taking out half of the crews right there. So, see, now we're just left with the top dogs. The legendary and the Yonko. And the Vice Admirals are competitive with the Legends. And the Yonkos, I mean, the Yonkos are the Yonko, but you just left with them. But because if you throw in enough of the Admirals and you throw in enough of the Vice Admirals, they're taking down the Yonko. See what I'm saying? So it works itself out into an interesting balance. At the top, like, it, the Pirate World is top heavy. As LeBron James, well, top heavy as fuck, top heavy as shit. But, you know, the, the, the Marines are banking on power and numbers. So, really, it's I'm going to leave this up to y'all. Who do y'all think better? I think the Pirates are better, partially be, 
you know, top heavy can be bad, but top heavy when it's an overwhelming hammer is better. But in a war of attrition, the Marines win. It's part of the reason why the Pirates don't take out the Marines. Also, the Pirates don't allow ally enough. So that's how that's the balancing act. Individually, overall, I say Pirates better. But the Marines. Like when when it comes to fire, they're just better. So it it's 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 an interesting game. Tell me y'all thoughts. Unexpected one like, comment, subscribe. There'll be many more videos and many different types of worlds and series to dissect. All right, y'all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night, peace.